Sometimes I feel that I could fight an army with just me and you And there's no one could harm me Oh, but sometimes I can feel a little shy It's then I need to know that you are there That's why I'm singing Be with me, Lord, when I'm down Be with me, Lord, when I'm lonely Be with me, Lord, when I'm tired Be with me, be with me I know you said that I would not be tested more than I could bear And that you have my best in mind with everything that ever comes my way I know you're in control, so hear me as I pray I'm singing, be with me, Lord, when I'm down Be with me, Lord, when I'm lonely Be with me, Lord, when I'm tired Show my neighbor where to treasure store. Help me know you promise you'd be with me, Lord. I'm singing, be with me, Lord, when I'm down. Be with me, Lord, when I'm lonely. Be with me, Lord, when I'm tired. Be with me, be with me, be with me, Lord, when I'm down. Be with me, Lord, when I'm lonely. Be with me, Lord, when I need you. Be with me, be my only. I'm Paul and I'm Jordan and today we just want to you know express the privilege that we have of delivering the welcome to you this morning you know today is also Father's Day and uh, we want to take the opportunity to be able to big up all the dads as we worship together this morning you know when I was growing up uh, my dad was a constant in my life um, I appreciated the fact that um, he was there for me um, through you know many and varied situations and even though i had other siblings it gave a special sense of of um security and i'm um, confident that he was there for me you know but this morning we want to be able to look at um our eternal father our eternal god who wants to be there for us in all situations and he gives us that confidence by sharing it with us um, from his word uh, just how special we are to him and i'll give jordan a chance to be able to share now yes and in doing so i'd like to invite you all to turn with me in your bibles to first john chapter 3 reading verses 1 and 2. it reads see what great love the father has lavished on us that we should be called children of god and that is who that is what we are the reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him Dear friends, now we are children of God, and what we will be has not been made known. But we know that when Christ appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. You know, for me, when I read this scripture, what really stands out to me is just God's awesome, magnificent love being displayed as he allows us to be his children. You know, and it's not just something that's in name where oh yes you're you're i'm your child but it's a reality you know as long as we you know believe that we are his and we know that he believes that we are his when we choose to live by him it's something that's really special and i think that's something that we can always look um into and be appreciative of our father in heaven man 
At this time, um, we want to use the opportunity to be able to welcome you um, to the Sunday morning worship service of the Kingston Church of Christ. And once again, we want to say big up to all the dads. Let's go before our God in prayer at this time. Our Father in heaven, we come before your presence just to be able to give you thanks for you being the incredible God that you are. And in a world of so many uncertainties, Father, you are a sure um, source of, of um, confidence, a sure source of, uh, of, of being an anchor for our souls. And we are grateful, Father, that indeed you have called us your children. You have adopted us into your family. And I pray, Lord, that in spite of you know, what our past history might have been, whether our fathers were there for us or not, that, Father, you, you know, God, have placed the lonely in families. And you have given us all the opportunity, Father, to be able to, to be called your children. And so, God, as we worship this morning, we want to honor you as our very great Father, our eternal Father, and um, our source of, of eternal life. Father, we pray that you would guide and direct just our worship together. May we honor you as you are deserving of being honored. And even on this day, as we celebrate our fathers, um, you know, God, we, we thank you so much for them being in our lives. And even if they weren't in our lives, Father, remind us that you desire to be our father. And uh, you've given us that incredible privilege. And once we put our faith in you, it can never be taken away from us. We love you, Lord. We thank you. And we pray all of this to your son's precious, holy, and righteous name. Amen. Amen. Good morning, everybody. It's so great to be with all of you today. You know, we serve an amazing God. In spite of everything that we go through, God is still good. And so right now, we want to take an opportunity just to give from glory and honor. So feel free to sing with us if you will. All the glory belongs to you. All the glory belongs to you, oh God. All the glory belongs to you. All the glory belongs to you, oh God. All the glory belongs to you. All the glory belongs to you, oh God. All the glory belongs to you. All the glory belongs to you, oh God. All the glory belongs. All the glory belongs to you. To you. All the glory belongs to you, oh God. Yeah, yeah. Sing all the glory belongs. All the glory belongs to you. To you. All the glory belongs to you, oh God. Sing all the glory belongs to you, oh God. All the glory belongs to you, oh God. All the glory belongs to you, oh God. All the glory belongs. All the glory belongs to you. All the glory belongs to you. To you. All the glory belongs to you, oh God. Mm -hmm. So we say ha, ha, le, le, lu, ya, say ha. All the glory belongs to you, oh God. All the glory belongs to you, oh God. All the glory belongs to you, oh God. Lift it up, all the glory belongs. All the glory belongs to you, to you. All the glory belongs to you, oh God. Yeah, yeah. So we say hi, hallelujah. Say hi. Sing them to, sing them to the stumbling crowd 
Sing of Jesus and His words. Sing until the earth has heard. Always sing, always sing your praises loud. Sing unto the stumbling crowd. Sing of Jesus and His words. Sing until the earth has heard. So we say ha ha le.
Good morning, everyone. It is great to have you join us for another time of worship. I'd like to start by saying a happy Father's Day to all fathers and father figures out there. Now, before we get into the scripture, I just want to say that I know this day can be difficult, a difficult one for some persons. While there are those that look forward to this day and honoring their fathers and the men in their life that have played a fatherly role, it may not be so joyous an occasion for others. The reality is that not everyone has their father in their life whether it be from him not playing an active role or no longer being around. That being said, I'd love for us to speak of a father that loves all of us and that yearns to be a part of our lives and one that will always be around. I'm of course speaking about our Heavenly Father. Now, today we'll be reading from Psalm 103, which is written by David, and from verse 1 it reads, Praise the Lord my soul, all my inmost being, praise his holy name. Praise the Lord my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with heavenly love and compassion, who satisfies your desires with good things, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works righteousness and justice for all the oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his deeds to the people of Israel. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbor his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For he knows how we are formed. He remembers that we are dust. The life of mortals is like grass. They flourish like a flower of the field. The wind blows over it and it is gone. And its place remembers it no more. But from everlasting to everlasting, the Lord's love is with those who fear him and his righteousness with their children's children, with those who keep his covenant and remember to obey his precepts. The Lord has established his throne in heaven and his kingdom rules over all. Praise the Lord, you his angels, you mighty ones who do his bidding, who obey his word. Praise the Lord, all his heavenly hosts, you his servants who do his will. Praise the Lord, all his works everywhere in his dominion. Praise the Lord, my soul. You know, the description of God's love is something that many try to explain. However, it is very difficult to explain something that you can only truly understand with first-hand experience. It's like trying to explain color to a blind person or a chorus to a deaf person. The psalmist here, however, makes an attempt at describing the loving nature of God. In verse 8, it says that he is abounding in love. And in verse 11 says, For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. In verse 11, it says, As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. And in verse 13, 
It says, but from everlasting to everlasting, the Lord's love is with those who fear him. You know, for the unbeliever, the fear of God may be the fear of the judgment of God. You know, eternal death, which is eternal separation from God. But for the believer, however, the fear of God is something much different. The believer's fear is reverence of God. Hebrews 12 verse 28 to 29 says this, Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us be thankful and so worship God acceptably with reverence and awe, for our God is a consuming fire. This reverence and awe are exactly what the fear of God means for Christians. It is the motivating factor for us to surrender to the Father of all creation. The point is not simply that God loves, but that he is love itself. Love is not merely one of the attributes of God, but it is his very nature. The scripture says, and we have come to know and to believe the love that God has for us. God is love, and the one who remains in love remains in God, and God remains in him. So to say that God is love is not simply to imply that love is God. The phrase God is love means that God wants the very best for you. He has your best interest in mind and wants to give you good gifts and provide you with all his benefits. So what are these benefits of God's love? Well, the psalmist uncovers all the phases of life that God's love has touched and in turn benefits us and blesses us with. You see, God's love blesses us spiritually. He removes the barrier that separates us from him by canceling the debt of our sin so that we can enjoy a loving relationship with him. God's love removes our sins as though they never existed. It also benefits us emotionally. A lot of our physical and emotional illness is due to moral failure, a guilt that weighs down on us. But in removing the sin and guilt from our lives, God's love brings healing to our emotional life. God's love also blesses us eternally. The pit that is referred to in verse 4 is the pit of death. God's love rescues us from our own destruction that we have dug ourselves into. It pulls us out and grants us eternal life. God's love also blesses us physically. Like a father who desires to give us good gifts of strength and endurance. You know, Jesus was the embodiment of God's love and came enjoying life. And he wants us to do the same, to enjoy the life that we are here to live. God's love also blesses us judicially. Now, we find a major difference between divine love and what many other people mistake as love that people have for each other. Now, often love is expressed as the virtue that accepts everything, but God's love makes judgment calls. It is a divine love that hates what is wrong and embraces what is right. Now, this may be a bit of a scary proposition because if you know that you're to be a sinner or if you think that you're not perfect, you may say, well, God doesn't love me because... I have something that is wrong or I have done something that is wrong. But in his infinite wisdom, he is able to separate the sin from the sinner and he will still love us irrespective of what we've done. So what do we know about God's love? This love that, you know, has so many benefits for us. Well, we know that the Father's love is all-consuming. It touches that means that it touches every part of our life. There is nowhere that we can go to escape God's love. There is no problem that we will ever encounter that is not touched by his love. There is no advancement that we will make where God is not already there. And even when our world falls apart, we can say, God, I don't know why this is happening. I don't understand it but I'm sure glad to know that you love me. You know, God's love is something that is so comforting to us that irrespective of what's going on, it brings us peace. And an illustration that I'd like to give is of a child who is brought to the school their very first day of school. Now the parents or parents carry them 
and they're excited. They're happy to, they're, you know, they're glad to see all of what's going on. There's new friends, new things to do. But then as the parent leaves, the child is no, no in turmoil. Because all they have known up until their, this point in their life is the love of their parent. And now that the parent is leaving them in this unfamiliar place with these unfamiliar people, it is confusing and it is frightening. And now the parent has to stay with the child. So when he turns back and goes to console the child, you know, no, the child is happy. And everything is okay. No, the situation hasn't changed. They're, they're still at school on their first day in an unfamiliar environment with unfamiliar people. But what brings comfort is to know that someone who loves them is there with them. Now, it may be inconvenient to the parent. Likely, they have to leave and go to work and, you know, sort out, sort out all these other things in life. But for the child, what is most important is that that parent is there. And that is what it is like to experience God's love. That irrespective of what's going on, even when we're on, in unfamiliar environments, and even when we have so much going on that you know, we're on, in unfamiliar territory with people that we don't know, it brings us peace to know that God is with us. That our Heavenly Father will be there with us in the face of this new that we have come to encounter. You know, when you have someone who loves you holding you, it doesn't matter what everyone else does or what the circumstances are or what the future holds. When you are in the arms of a loving God, when you have been consumed with his love, everything becomes okay. We also know that the Father's love is personal. Now, God is capable of loving and being loved, and he loves each of us intensely and personally. God's love is not simply for mankind as a whole, right? He does love mankind and all of mankind, but also he loves each and every one of us individually. You know, Karl Barth, a famed German theologian, visited uh, the United States at a seminary. And after the seminary, a student, a student asked him the question. He asked if he could summarize his whole life's work in theology in one sentence. Now, Barth replied something like this. He said, yes, I can. In the words of a song that I learned on my mother's knee, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. You know, the phrase Jesus loves me is the central affirmation of the Christian faith, and it is the cornerstone of the nature of God. Our brother, Richard Salmon, taught us recently that the name Jesus means the Lord saves. So with that in mind, we can look at the phrase, Jesus loves me as the Lord that saves loves me. The Heavenly Father loves you. You are worthy of his love. You are valuable to him. And he wants a relationship with you, regardless of what others may think, and even of what you may think. In his eyes, you are wonderful. And the last thing that we know is that the Father's love is beyond comprehension. You know, it is amazing how God can know the most intimate details about us and still love us. He knows all our wrongs, all the bad thoughts that we've ever had, the secrets that we've never told, and the mistakes that we've made. And yet, He still loves us. He knows we are sinners and yet He forgives us. When we dig ourselves into a hole based on the actions that we've made or didn't make, he pulls us out. When we are ungrateful for his good gifts, he gives them anyway. And when we would deserve punishment, he shows us grace and mercy. You know, I remember a story as a child. Uh, you know, I was maybe about four years old and we were visiting my grandparents. So everyone was outside, everyone but my dad. And I was on top of the car bonnet. I have no idea why I was there, but that's where I was. So everyone is outside gathered and they're doing their thing. I'm on top of the car bonnet, probably doing what kids do, enjoying themselves irrespective of what's going on. And then my dad comes out of the house and I see him and I yell, Daddy! And I get up on the car bonnet and I jump towards him. And my father sees this and with a speed that surpasses Usain Bolt, he runs and he dives and he catches me. 
and he holds me. And everyone is there looking dumbfounded because they just they realize what's going on. And I can just hear it. Yes, we all know that you can hear it. Pick me if you own it. No way, you just do. But none of that mattered. All that mattered to me was that my father is there and I knew that he would catch me. It, there was no doubt in my mind that I was safe with him around. That is what it is like to experience the father's love. That irrespective of what is going around, irrespective of who's there that you know that you don't know, you know that you are safe because he is with you. And he will unquestioningly, unthinkingly, and unhesitantly run to save you, to keep you safe, and to comfort you. Now, you may be saying, well, you know, it's easier to accept what a child does and just love a child because they're a child and they maybe don't know what it is that they're doing. But do you think that a father's love changes for his child when they are a toddler or older? I say that the short answer is no. And it is the same with our Heavenly Father's love. It is unchanging. It is the same as when we were infants and now, when we were just baptized and now, even when we were sinners. He loves us the same. His love is unchanging. That is his nature. And, you know, to illustrate this, there's a story in the story of the prodigal son, we are shown a father's love for a wayward and rebellious son that awaits anxiously for him to return home so he can grant him a new start. And the prodigal son is now translated as the, par the parable of the lost son. And we'll read that in Luke 15 from verse 11 onward. And it reads in Luke 15 verse 11, it says, Jesus continued, There was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got together all he had, set off for a distant country, and there squandered his wealth in wild living. After he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in that whole country, and he, had to be, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country, who sent him to his fields to feed pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. When he came to his senses, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have food to spare? And here I am starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. So he got up. And went to his father but while he was still a long way off his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him he ran to his son threw his arms around him and kissed him the son said to him father i have sinned against heaven and against you i am no longer worthy to be called your son but the father said to his servants quick bring the best robe and put it on him put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and he is found. So they began to celebrate. Meanwhile, the older son was in the field. When he came near the house, he heard music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked what was going on. Your brother has come, he replied. And your father has killed the fattened calf because he has him back safe and sound. The older brother became angry and refused to go in. So his father went out and pleaded with him. But he answered his father, Look, all these years I have been slaving for you and never disobeyed your orders. Yet you never gave me even a young goat so I could celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours who has squandered your property with prostitutes come home, you kill the fattened calf for him. My son, the father said, you are always with me and everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate and be glad because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. You know, this is the love that the Father has for us. A love that wipes the slate clean, 
that doesn't remember our wrongs, that eagerly waits for us. Even in the face of those that would stand to say, but this person has made their own decisions and has strayed away from your love, surely they are undeserving of the goodness that you have to give. Why would you not want to welcome them, but pour onto them so greatly your grace and mercy? It is because our Heavenly Father loves you with so great a love that others simply cannot understand. It is incomprehensible. Not until they've experienced it for themselves, maybe. But then God's love is so great that even then, they may just only begin to understand the vastness of his love. So I tell you with the utmost confidence, the Father's love is the most amazing experience you can ever have. You know, a blind person may never be able to indulge in scenery of the rising or setting of the sun. And a deaf person may never be able to hear the voices of their loved ones even with the advancements in today's technology and medicine. But we all have an opportunity to experience firsthand the Father's love. Now, if you don't know how to take the first step towards knowing God, or perhaps you're concerned that you have made some decisions that would have pushed you, pu pushed you away from Him, and you don't think that you are deserving of coming back to Him, I'd like to tell you that, you know, God loves you and he wants a relationship with you. So, if you're uncertain of that first step or how to get back, there is a connect card that you can find in the chat and in the description below. And we'd love to get you connected so that you can experience the Father's love. And if you are not in Jamaica, we can, we'll still get you connected. We have sister churches all over the world so we can get you connected with some, the closest one to you and you will know and experience firsthand this love that we know that we want you to be a part of to have experience for yourself and to know that this is the father's love and with that said as we go on to the communion i'd like to introduce you to my own father who will deliver the communion mark price Good morning, and thank you very much, Mikhail. I really appreciate it. And this morning, as we are about to get into the communion, Mikhail spoke about the love of the Father. I guess at this time, I'll talk about the love of the Son. You know, it is interesting that Jesus was highly anticipated by the Jewish community. In fact, one of their biggest, uh, you know, time that they spent together was at the Passover, because the Passover was a significant time in their history, where it represented the plagues and a time where they were freed from bondage from Egypt. You know, Jesus came, and we pick it up in Luke 22, verse 14, where he prepared a time where he was able to get together with his disciples and have the Passover meal. It says in verse 14, when the hour came, Jesus and his disciples were climbing at the table, and he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. I think one of the main thing here is eagerly. I don't recall Christ ever saying he was eager to do anything before, but the scripture says he was eager to have this meal. And he says, after taking the cup, he gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among you, for I tell you, I will not drink again from the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took the bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. You know, Christ, two things that are noticeable here. Apart from the fact that he's saying that his body and his blood is being given freely 
for us. As we know, it was broken on a cross and his blood flowed for our sins as he was a final sacrifice for the forgiveness of sins. But he said, I have eagerly. And secondly, he said, in remembrance of me. I can't remember the last time or reading anywhere in the Bible. And hey, I might not have read everywhere where Jesus has said, do this in remembrance of me. Christ did everything for the love of his father. His father first loved us. And he wanted to please his father by eagerly winning our freedom by giving himself for us. So at this time, as we really take the bread and drink of the fruit of the vine, let us do it in a manner where we focus in appreciating the sacrifice that was given for us. Let us go to God in prayer at this time. Father in heaven, we really want to thank you so much that you allowed your son to come and give himself freely for us in terms of being abused and broken on the cross to the point where, Father, his, his blood flowed freely and he was the last sacrifice given that can now afford us freedom from our past as long as we choose to turn away from it, where you will not hold our sins against us, but give us a completely clean slate. Help us not to take the sacrifice for granted. Help us as, Father, we break the bread and we eat of his flesh to do it in a manner that is worthy of you. Also, as we drink the wine which represents his blood, we will do it in a grateful manner, realizing that what we have came only through the sacrifice of Christ. We thank you. We pray this to your son's precious name. Amen.
There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. No wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. No. Good morning, everyone. Here are your announcements for today. Midweek devotion. Each region will be having separate devotion services this Wednesday, June 22nd, all starting at 7.30 p.m. on the Zoom platform. Look out for the specific link for your region. Teen and Campus Devotions Special Friday Afternoon Online Devotions for Teens and Campus Students will begin at 5.30 and 6.30 p.m. respectively. Now we have the options for giving. The card machine at the church office will be available Mondays, Tuesdays, Fridays, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Online bank transfers may also be used or deposit to the church's account at any Scotia branch. For transfers and deposits at the bank, call the church office for banking details. After the transaction is done, please call, text, or email the office with details of the type of offering that you gave, such as regular, poor, special missions. PayPal for U.S. online contributions. Use the address paypal.me forward slash kcocnja to transfer funds. Next week Sunday service. Next Sunday will be the last Sunday of the month which means that the worship service will be live streamed on this channel. The start time is 10 a.m. and the sermon will be delivered by Gregory Ball. We'll now end today's worship with a final song and a wish for all fathers a happy Father's Day. Father 